Hello BookTube. Um, today we are going to be finishing up um, Robert E. Howard's Rogues in the House. Which is a very fun story. And um, if you haven't read it all yet, you can go over to weirdmass.com and um, read both the first two chapters are in one post and this last chapter will be in another. So, um, how the story sets off in chapter three is Mirlo hears, um, this crazy, loud, metal clang sound. And he opens his eyes and he's in this pit and it's really dark, he can't see anything. And, um, he just starts wandering around. And um, he's wandering through. And then um, he hears a voice go, Mirlo. And he's like, Conan? And Conan's like, yeah, I almost gutted you. You know, like, and he's like, well, what happened? And he's like, well, I came in through the sewers. And then as I was coming in, this giant metal grate came down and it would have like stabbed me to the ground if I didn't get, jump out of the way real quick. And he's like, well, can we get out of here? And he's like, no. So then Mirlo tells Conan about what happened when he went to kill um, Nabonidus. And how he was like this monster and, um, Conan's like, yeah, I've heard of, like, werewolves before, you know, like, we'll kill them. And he's like, well, how did you know it was me? And he's like, I could smell the perfume you had in your hair. And he's like, oh. Um, but anyway, so now they're both here. They start wandering around, and, um, they could see a light coming, so they follow the light. And they see this, like, half-naked dude, like, who might be dead on the floor. And they go up to it, and Conan's about to, like, put a knife through the heart just to make sure he's dead. And it's Nabonidus. And, um, he's, like, coming to, he's got a big knot on his head. Um, and Mirlo's like, how are you here? Like, you were upstairs, and, like, you were a beast. And he's like, no, that was Thack. Um, so basically, the story here is, is that Nabonidus got a cub um, from this people in the far, far east who, um, are not apes, but are not human. Like, they're in the evolutionary middle ground. And he brought him back and trained him and raised him to be, like, his, like, bodyguard. And now, Thak has decided that he wants to wear the red cloak and do all the stuff that his master was doing. So he got rid of his master. So they go into this, like, little room that has this big disc on the wall. And, um, what it is, is a place you can go to um, watch what's going on in all parts of the pits. And um, can also see what's going on in the, um, the throne room. It's almost like a, um, like a safe room. And this big disc on the wall is really just a mirror that um, 
there's all these copper pipes with little mirrors in them that um, reflect all these lights from all these different places. And um, Miro's like, oh my gosh, this is amazing. I can't believe this. You're so brilliant. And Conan's like, huh. witchcraft, I don't care. Um, which is awesome Conan stuff. So they're looking in the throne room and they can see Thak sitting on the throne, staring at the door that they should be coming through. Because there's like an alarm that goes off when the grate in the sewer gets tripped. So Thak is waiting for whoever came in to come through that door. And while he's waiting, um, some people come up from behind him. And Nabonidus gets all excited. He's like, oh, this is great. Um, these are the nationalists who probably came to assassinate me um, and all this other jazz. And it, he's curious to see how much Thak knows about what to do in situations like this since he's been watching him for so long. So as soon as Thak sees these guys coming, he pulls this cord and these like thick glass walls surround him. And they're banging on the walls trying to get out and Nabonidus is like, oh, like I can't believe how smart he is. And then he pulls this other cord and um, the powder from the Grey Lotus starts coming down. And what the Grey Lotus does is it basically drives you mad. So these guys who came to kill Nabonidus um, have now decided that they're crazy and they're going to kill each other. And so, it's just like a big slash fest, blood squirting everywhere, everyone's bleeding, everyone's absolutely out of their mind, and um, they're all dead. And Nabonidus is very happy that he's, his enemies have been killed, but he's also curious to see what Thak would do next, and Thak pulls this other cord that sucks the air out of the glass enclosure and then um, opens the glass. So he knows very much what's going on and all this stuff. Thak goes past the bodies to leave the room um, to, I don't know if he's going to shut the door they came in from or whatever. Um, but Nabonidus is like, come on, we gotta go now. Like he's out of the room, this is our only chance. So they um, run up the stairs, go through the door, and go down this corridor. Because um, Nabonidus is like, we need weapons if we're going to defeat Thak. And so they go down this hallway with all these doors, and all the doors are shut, and all the doors are locked. And Nabonidus can't believe that Thak thought ahead to lock all the doors. And he's like, we're screwed, and we're going to have to fight him. So to Conan, he's like, do you think you can do it? And Conan's like, I can do whatever I want, you know, like. Um, so Thak is back in the throne room now, and Nabonidus is like, to Mirlo, he's like, go out there and have him chase you, and then when you run in here, Conan will jump him and, you know, whatever. Mirlo doesn't want to do this because he's a big wuss, but he does it anyway. And um, Thak starts running at him, and as soon as he passes through, Conan jumps on him. Now, this is one of the probably more famous Frazetta paintings of um, things that happen in Conan stories. Um, this is on the cover of the um, Lance and or Lancer and Ace, um, I think this one's just Conan, so I guess the first book they put out, um, but 
when you see it, you'll go, oh yeah, that's Conan with his legs around Thak's waist, stabbing him a bunch. Um, and I don't know if this painting does justice to what Thak is supposed to look like. Um, I, I don't know, like, it seems like he's more like Neanderthal than Ape, but at the same time, like, depending on who's describing him in the story, he might just be, like, very ape-like. I, I just, I don't Conan gets him, stabs him, stabs him, stabs him. Um, Thak is tearing him up. And they're just going back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. And um, Conan finally defeats him. And he's like, that was no animal, that was a man. And um, he's like, my women shall sing songs of him. <laughs> so classic anyway um oh so earlier nabonidus said if you could help me get out of here you know i won't um turn you into the king and all this other stuff so nabonidus and miro made this pack well now that they have defeated thak and um everything's fine. Nabonidus is like, he goes for this uh, rope, and he's like, this cord, he's gonna pull it, he's like, I'm gonna blast you jerks out of the sky. And um, Mirlo's like, I thought we had a deal. And he's like, yeah, I said I want to turn you into the king, but I didn't say I want to kill you. And, um, so while they're arguing back and forth, Conan's like, and he picks up like a stool and just chucks a stool at him and kills him. <laughs> and Conan's like, oh, his blood is red like everyone else's. And like, um, Mirla's like, well, I guess... I don't have any problems now. Probably should get out of here before the sun comes up. And um, Conan's like, well, I would like to plunder this place, but you're probably right. We should go. And Miro's like, so what are you going to do? And he's like, well, you said you had a horse for me. So I'll take the horse and get the hell out of here. <laughs> and that's the end of the story. But it's just so funny how Conan's like, he can, like, fight people, kill them with, like, I don't know, just the idea of throwing a stool at somebody and killing them. It's the same idea, like, in Tower of the Elephant, where he threw a chest at the spider and killed it. Um, it just cracks me up. Like, it's not that I'm like, oh, he should have thrown this stool at him and then gone and, like, cut his throat. It just cracks me up that he could, like, kill somebody with a stool from across the room. But anyway, so that's Rogues in the House. Um, it's a really fun story. Um, and next week we're going to be doing Black Colossus, which is another fun story. So um, I will see you then.